Hello again and welcome to Spotlight, the interview show on RT. I'm Al Grunov and today my guest on the show is Andrenis Adjubelis. Lithuania is now topping the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Not an easy task if we remember the problems they have to tackle the human rights abuses in uh, Belarus, the situation in the Transnistria, in Nagorno-Karabakh, and so on and so forth. What's their fresh look at those problems? Let's ask the Lithuanian Foreign Minister, Andrinis Azubelis. The OSCE office in Belarus accused the country's leader Alexander Lukashenko of foul play during recent presidential elections. That cost the office its license, and the OSCE chairman sees little hope Mr. Lukashenko can be talked into changing his mind. But the Lithuanian foreign minister Dronis Azhubalis is optimistic about the effect economic sanctions can have on Minsk. And he's also optimistic about the frozen conflict in Transnistria, hoping something can finally change for the better. Hello, Minister. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for being on the spotlight. My pleasure. Well, uh, Lithuania has assumed the uh, chairmanship uh, of the OSCE, and one of the burning issues is the situation in neighboring Belarus, I mean, neighboring to Lithuania, also, of course, to Russia, where the authorities have shut down the OSCE office. What is your reaction? How are you going to act? Are you going to try to reopen the office? Of course, it's our intentions to pursue the authorities uh, of Belarus to, to reopen. But we would like to, that this, uh, in this case, the office would keep the same uh, meaningfulness, that it will be with some content, not just decoration. But uh, to be very frank, I do not have very much hope. Despite that, that all countries, including Russia, United States, uh, ask the Minsk to not to close the this office. What uh, the next step? I think the next step is just to to be present, especially now when I think some trials are coming, just to keep the monitoring situation. And now we are working on that. Well, uh, as far as I understand, the EU introduced a set of sanctions uh, against Belarus, which Moscow considers to be counterproductive. So what makes you, I mean, what makes the Europeans think that these sanctions are going to work? I think the sanctions, um, maybe they do not have very much, I would say, uh, economical uh, uh, consequences, but have, uh, I would say, moral and psychological meaning. And uh, that's why uh, 157 names uh, were, I would say, uh, put on, on a visa ban. Your opposite number in Poland, Radoslav Sikorski, he's quoted as saying that he's convinced that, quote, Alexander Lukashenko faces a popular uprising such as those taking place in North Africa, unless he changes course and stops his crackdown on the opposition. Sooner or later, says Sikorski, he will be forced to seek shelter in another country, end quote. Well, uh, Looking from Vilnius, do you believe that uh, Lukashenko really uh, faces an uh, uprising? Do you believe that his regime is doomed? Uh, you know, I'm not a uh, fictionist. I'm not, not going to make such uh, conclusions. But I just would like to look a little bit back. I remember 2006, uh, immediately after the elections. What we saw in Belarus at that time, five, four thousand people, few parties, few NGOs. What we saw now after these elections, 30,000 people, a huge amount of different parties, NGOs. It means that we see that the civic society is growing up. And this is encouraging me that after some time we will see the changes. But really, I don't want to speculate when it will happen. I think our main effort is to help this, to grow the society. I would say to support, in, as we support in Lithuanians, when we are um, having the only one university in exile in Vilnius, uh, European Humanities University, where the 2,000 Belarusian students are learning. 
Uh, you have come to Moscow this time to discuss a number of pretty important issues, such as the situation in the Transnistria, the nagorno karabakh situation, so on and so forth. Is there much difference between the approach to these issues in Moscow, in Vilnius, in Brussels? I would say so. Uh, you know, the Brussels is a uh, the Brussels is very divided. You know, uh, the Moscow has their own interests. Uh, we as well, but I think some interests regarding the stability regarding uh, uh, not inflaming more situation like in Nagorno Karabakh, I think it's the same in all three mentioned points. That's what I'm, uh, I would say that I'm, I'm quite uh, satisfied with my discussions with my counterpart, uh, Mr. Lavrov, uh, because we found some common, uh, I would say, points where we could work. Of course, to, t to say that uh, uh, we are like-minded in 100% it would be stupid. But I must say one thing, that I see the real prospect and real hopes to make small, I would, I'm talking about very small changes in, in Transnistria conflict. And uh, we agreed on some actions, I mean on some events. Uh, and our main goal that uh, the, to resume the talks five plus two. And here I, I I understood that we could expect uh, some support from the uh, Russian side. Have you discussed the uh, South Ossetia issue at all with the Russian Foreign Minister? Have you, have you uh, touched upon the, the matter of the readmission of the OSC mission to South Ossetia? I presented our view and I said that it would be fruitful to, I would say, to extend uh, the OSC mission in whole territory, consent. Uh, I, I, I must say that it will be not so easy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the position of the Russian side or because of the situation in general? <laughs> I, I, I would take the much more easy answer. Situation in general. Situation in general. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, what's Russia? I, is Russia ready to have the OEC mission back? You know, we have a different approaches, you know, and different treatment. We are not recognizing the so-called uh, states Ossetia mm -hmm. uh, and Abkhazia. Mm -hmm. Russia does. And this is, makes a huge difference uh, how we see the situation in the region. Now, so, 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 so the talk is about the status of the mission. Will it be a mission in a separate country or in the part of Georgia? So this is the problem. But on the whole, do you think it will be uh, worthwhile to have such a mission? Absolutely. May it help? Absolutely, because I see this mission as a tool for implementing confidence building measures. Starting from simple thing, not to block water to each other. On, on, on the bordering regions, uh, not to close the gas to each other and something like that, just to help people to live their daily life less or more normally. Start from that, from the scratch. And this mission would, would be very helpful. But unfortunately, till time, I think... Well, as you have just proved by answering my previous mm -hmm. question, the situation for, uh, in South Ossetia and Abkhazia, mm -hmm. uh, for diplomats, it's a purely political matter. It's a diplomatic matter, yeah? Well, and it's important, I understand, this is very important. But for people there, I mean, <clears throat> it's different. It's not diplomacy, it's not... It's their life. So if both sides, Russia, the uh, European countries, even Georgia, if they want their people to live better, to help them, do you think we can overcome someday these political issues or they will remain there forever? I think it, it, it will take a lot of time and, 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 it's depend, and it will depend on the, I would say very simple, simply, on economical situation in Georgia. If a Georgia will succeed in their uh, fast economical development, as we see now, some good good, good uh, st uh, I would say, prognosis, mm, you know, everything could happen. And if not? You know, then you, you know, I think the situation could remain the same. Could remain the same for, for, for years and years I to think, come. Of course, you see, we, we see, and it's not a secret, we see some military building in this region, which makes us very, I would say, unhappy, because the military building means what? Tensions. And uh, till uh, the, I would say the Russia 
uh, will not uh, abandon this military building, I think not, not much hope. Uh, when you discuss issues like uh, like the Transnistria, like like Karabakh, city Abkhazia, with uh, your colleagues here in Moscow, uh, do you find uh, yourself in a situation when you understand each other perfectly? Uh, that I mean, mm, well, you speak the same language, yes, yes but sure. but do you feel that that uh, the system uh, of thinking is the same, that you want to achieve both achieve the same goals and have common enemies or not? In some cases, yes. Let's take the Karabakh. This is positive. This is uh, yeah, good. What uh, uh, let's take the Karabakh. We both know that the situation is becoming dangerous then, uh, day and day uh, more and more. And it means that it makes us concerned very much, including Russia, including Lithuania, including other countries. Because what we are afraid for, that one day the situation could go under control and we will have, you know, I don't want even to, to, to mention in, in words, but here we are very like-minded and here we really talk very sincerely what we could do. And of course we very much value the activity of the Russian leadership in trying to appease both leaders from both countries. Says Lithuanian Foreign Minister Odrenis Arzhubalis. He's talking to us on Spotlight. We will be back shortly after we take a break. So stay with us. We'll continue this interview in less than a minute.